Good morning, good morning, good morning. What's up guys? Today, we're gonna to be talking about cars. And I've got some information for you that's going to help you decide if you wanna start a Turo business or not. Because I'm gonna bring you some information about the Turo business that no one else on YouTube has even begun to talk about. The first thing, do you understand or do you even know that Turo has a program for people who already have car rental businesses. And you can put your cars from your car rental business and get 95% of the profit. No one, no one has ever talked about this on YouTube. I've not seen it anywhere and I'm gonna tell you why in a minute. So, scaling up on Turo, the sweet spot seems to be three to five vehicles. Why is this a sweet spot? Three to five vehicles is something you can do by yourself and it doesn't take employees. You start to enter the danger zone when you get 25 to 40 vehicles. And I've done some research and numerous Turo hosts who had 60, 70, 80 vehicles have come off the platform. Why? Cameron's law. At some point, all third party platforms, platforms behave in their best interest. So, you know, essentially, uh, there are some people who think I'm in the car business. I'm not in the car business. I don't have my dealer's license and I cannot get my dealer's license until I get an office because that is part of the application process. So I am not in the car business. I am in the car rental business, kinda sorta. So last two weeks, I have been doing what's called buying data. I had to buy cars and put them on the platform to get real data because uh, there, there's a lot of YouTubers who I'm not, I'm not going to bash them. I'm going to say they can only give you information relative to their experience, which isn't a bad or nefarious thing. It's just this, but it's very, very limiting for what I'm trying to do. So I had to go ahead, get some cars and start buying my data. And boy, did I get some information. Um, essentially, um, Turo, I've, I've got rentals on Turo. Turo is not overly involved because essentially when someone rents the car, you gotta take pictures of the car, you gotta take pictures of the odometer, you gotta take pictures of the fuel limits, and if it comes back damaged, you gotta take pictures of the damage, that hasn't happened. Um, so here's what I'm going to do today. I am going to do shop for my own insurance. That right there seems to be, that insurance and marketing, that seems to be the biggest barriers that most people have because there's a guy on your Turo, he's got 15 cars, he's doing like 10,000 a month, which means that he was giving up 30% or close to $4,000 to Turo. That's significant. That's significant. That's $60,000 a year. It's very significant. So what I have learned, I am not going to go crazy buying cars on Turo. And I want you guys to listen to me. Right now, there are many people who are pushing, put the car on Turo. And you've got a lot of people going out and they're buying Corvettes. They're buying uh, Porsche. They're buying high-end cars. And the reason they're buying high-end cars are the high-end cars are what work on Turo. Um, I've seen some people do some videos where they were renting cheap cars. Uh, in Atlanta, that wasn't working. I had the Acura on there, not a bike. I got a BMW X5 on there. No one is, uh, is biting on it. Now, the Porsche stays out. I'm gonna have to snooze the Porsche whenever, and snoozing it is when you um, go into the Toro app 
and you pretty much take the car off of rotation and they give you a time where you can snooze it. And I'm gonna have to do that because the Porsche is gonna need brakes probably in a month or so. But the Porsche stays out. And th this is one of the things. When you buy or lease a car, by law, you have to have full coverage. When you buy a car outright, you can get around, get around with liability. So th this is one of the pitfalls to buying a new car through a bank and financing. And I, I can tell you, you know, like me, the Porsche, even though I own it outright, I have full coverage on it because it's a Porsche. Uh, it's 130 and for the BMW, it's 125. So my two cars are costing me 250. Let's say you had two, 10 new, newer cars on the Toro platform. You could be spending 25 to $3,000 a month for insurance. That is significant. That is very significant. So uh, everyone's rushing to put a car on Turo, and I'm saying be careful, be cautious, because if you're, you know, like if I was in this situation, I have a Porsche and I have a BMW. Now, let's say I just was one of those people who was like, I put my Porsche on, Porsche on Turo, Turo, Turo. I could make $30,000 a year running out that Porsche on Turo. And it really wouldn't be that big of a deal. It would be an additional $30,000 worth of income because I have two vehicles. That's what I'm talking about, the sweet spot. If you have two or three vehicles, they're just, you know, and you're not driving them all the time, yeah, you can make some extra money on Turo. And this right here seems to be the sweet spot for people who have extra vehicles that they did not go out and acquire because essentially, I was going for a totally different business model. I was going to go out and buy cars and put them on the tarot, which means cost. And this is where I started to run into some problems. Turo has what's called a car calculator. It's on the website. Essentially, you can put in the year, the model, and the uh, make of the car and get an estimate of how much this car would make on Turo. That car calculator was 100% spot on for the Porsche. And the Range Rover, here's some other little things. Uh, typically, people want to pick up on the weekends and people want to pick up later in the evenings. So if you're a person with a job, uh, uh, this could become another job very quickly if you know, because the way I have it set up, that um, I've had people question this, like, hey, could you know, can I cut, you know, last minute Larry's, could I come get it right now? Like right now, essentially I got it set where, you know, I have a 12 hour window where they have to notify me. And once again, I'm buying data. Right now, these next two months will be buying data, but I can already tell you that uh, once I get my own insurance, I'm gonna put the cars on Toro as a commercial in um, car rental business and make a lot more money. That Porsche will go from making 1,700 a month to 2,200, 2,300 a month. Uh, I bought the Porsche correctly. Um, now, here's another thing. Once I go ahead and get my own insurance, once again, no one is talking about this because it's the same thing that happened with eBay, Amazon. I don't want to market, so I'm going to put my products on these sites so I don't have to learn how to market. I know how to market, and that's where I'm going to win this game. Because now, two weeks of buying data, I had to buy some cars, I had to put them on there because essentially this was the only way I was going to get real numbers, real information. And like hire a car, yeah, hire a car works. Uh, I could probably get up to 
30, 40 cars on hire car and that's gonna work. Now, once I get my own insurance, and here's the thing with hire car, which I like, someone has to request to book your car. So let's say, let's fast forward six months into the future. I have my own insurance and I am running my business thesis because th this is where it gets good. I'm going to start running ads on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, offer up and wherever else I can. And it's going to be like, hey, if you're looking to get a car with no credit check, do this. And I'm going to have my whole spill because essentially I had a hypothesis and I took it to the marketplace and my hypothesis was wrong. That's not a bad thing. Because once again, you gotta conduct tiny experiments. So let's say I got a car on hire car and then someone comes in through a Craigslist ad, Facebook ad or offer up and they rent that car. I don't have to worry about someone trying to rent the car, book the car, because I have to approve it. I like that. So that gives me flexibility where, because um, essentially what's going to happen now that I have my data is um, I'm going to, well, it depends upon how much this commercial insurance cost. Because essentially, there's not a lot of information about that. I found one website that broke it down and I got to start making phone calls today. But let's say um, once I get my own insurance, I can rent those Acras out. Uh, I'm probably I'm going to keep the Porsche. I'm going to keep the BMW. But the Land Rovers, they got to go. Um, that was a mistake. Because essentially, I bought those Range Rovers based upon the Turo car calculator. They actually rent out for more than the Porsche. And I've gotten a lot of people, but they want to come in at 8, 9 o'clock at night. And my hours are like, you know, 7 to 5. And I, I don't know what's up with these people. Because essentially, you're going to have to go. Well, I, I don't really know how many Turo hosts get down. I really don't know, but I'm not going to be uh, renting cars at eight, like with hire car, because I did not set my hours. I ended up renting my first car at 10 p.m. at night. And that, that's just not going to work. Um, so also, so what I'm going to do is get my own insurance and then put the cars on Turo and get 95% of the payout. So that's, that's mission number one. My goal is to try to get this done this week. And then two, I got to wait until I get the titles because essentially I got cars I can't do anything with until I get the title. You, you can't trade them, you can't sell them until you get the title. So what I'm probably gonna do, the Range Rovers will get me four or five cars. I can sell them or I can trade them in. So we're going to go through that the whole process. Uh, we're going to trade them in for cheaper cars, but I can have a fleet. I got eight cars, right? So we, we, we turn the Range Rovers into five cars. Let's say we turn them into five cars. So we go from, um, that takes us up to 11 cars. We, we sell the Acras and, um, cause you know, I gotta do some more testing but essentially being an independent car rental business once again you got to know how the market is the most profitable way because like what i can do is advertise hey here here's something once again i'm gonna have to work these things out because i'm gonna go like hey you you need a car you could rent this car and essentially what i'm gonna do is get a bunch of really cheap cars because essentially the other day I test drove a 2015 Porsche Cyan nice car however based upon the car calculator it was gonna take me three years to get my money back that's too long that's way too long 
Uh, the scenarios that I have is like, you know, a year, that ain't too bad. But once I get my own insurance, this is where it becomes a game changer. Uh, I can go out and buy a $3,000 car and rent this bad boy out for 20 bucks a day. Once again, depending upon the insurance, because you know I don't know how much the insurance is gonna eat up of that. Because in my mind, I'm like, State Farm can insure a Porsche for 130. I have a sinking suspicion that it's going to be three times that per car. So if I've got a $3,000 car and I'm renting it out and my insurance is $300 a month and I rent it out for 20 bucks a day, that's 600. So half of my profit goes toward insurance, which, um, you know, we're going to see because I don't know those numbers yet. Uh, if it's twice, that's better. But essentially, I could take a, let's say, let's just go ahead and say worst case scenario. Uh, I get a $3,000 car and the insurance is $300 per month. And I rent it out for 25 bucks a day, which is uh, seven, yeah, it's uh, 750 a month. So I have a 450 profit on a $3,000 car. So it's gonna take seven, eight months of renting this car out for me to do the buy here, pay here. Or what I can do is rent this car out for say three months, it's gonna be 2,100, wait a minute, 750, three months, 450. So seven months, at 450 it's going to be 28 so i can rent the car out for six months and then i can say hey give me a down payment of 1500 so at this point i've paid for i've got my money back for the car and i've got a small profit and then pay me 200 bucks per month for 24 months that's really doable for a lot of people because they just went from paying 750 down to 200. I might even say 300, you know, just depending upon the car. Um, so $300 per month for 24 months. That is um, $7,200 profit. And I know this is gonna work because there's a lot of people who are coming to hire a car, they're renting a car just to have a car. They're, they're not doing the Uber. So I know that this will work and it's gonna be about buying the right cars and getting the right situations. But once I open up my rental business under my own name, Mac Daddy Autos, um, the sky's the limit because here's another issue with Turo. You gotta wait until someone finds your car and then he wants to rent it. Like there is no one doing this on Craigslist, so I have no competition. There is no one doing this on Facebook Marketplace, so I have no competition. Uh, someone, thank you, sent me. There's someone out in California that's kind of doing what I'm doing, but they're not doing it 100% because um, essentially, once I get the titles and I go out and buy these cars, um, because I, I will, you know, if I have the ability to rent my car in addition to Turo, I will still keep some cars on Turo. But I would be like, if it gets rented, I'll just snooze that car. So essentially, it's going to give me the ability, because also, I can charge what I want. Like uh, the Porsche rents out for... 90 bucks i can do like weekend rentals like you know fourth of july fourth of july is coming up uh real soon it's going to be a big rental weekend i can jack up my prices i can jack up my prices because essentially i'm going to have a website and i'm going to have people be able to book uh the car and make their payments and stuff so yeah this is what two weeks of buying real data gets you 
because now I'm in the position to make better decisions because like I was watching videos and honestly I was getting frustrated because I'm like, how is this thing going to work? How is this thing going to work? And I don't really know. I'm listening to these people. They're putting out, uh, I think in their best, they're putting out the best information they can, but they're, we, we're, we, we've got two different goals because Let's say I go ahead and get $23,000 cars, okay? And I put them out there and I rent them at 25 bucks a day. So let's, you know, worst case scenario, the insurance is 300 bucks a month per car. Um, so I have a 450 profit on 20 cars. That's gonna be like $9,000 a month. Um, so, you know, it really depends on how much this insurance costs and what kind of, you know, how I have to set it up and all this other stuff. So that's gonna be, for the cheaper cars, that's problematic. But for the more expensive cars, because also on Craigslist, I can do, hey, rent this Porsche out for a year, and then this is another thing. This, this has happened during the conversation. So let's say they rent the Porsche out for a year, right? And then at the end of the year, I would do a Kelly Blue Book value on it and I will sell them that car for that. So they are not going to pay for the depreciation that they put on the car twice. They're just gonna pay for it once. And you know, like I said, this thing is starting to shape up, but how, eh, go on YouTube. How many of these Toro hosts have told you that if they got their own insurance that they could put a car on Toro? I guarantee you, you won't find one video because they ain't looking that far. Because essentially, I'm all about control. And you know, when you have your own insurance, I have a feeling the Toro platform treats you a little different because their risk, they, they don't have no risk. The risk goes out the window. So that's gonna be the game changer. And I'm gonna start building this a certain way so this is a game changer and th this is building a business from scratch one of the big issues that people have is they want to use a third-party platform which handcuffs them because like I said Toro is a third-party platform and I've done a lot of research and once you start getting to like past 30 cars 25 really 25 seems to be the the limit before you start running into problems and there have been several toro hosts who had 70 cars on the platform and they're no longer on that platform i have a feeling you know because essentially now let's say i have 100 cars but i have my own insurance and I can put them on the platform and if they go, they go. If they don't go, because I'm running, running my own rentals, uh, I can do television advertisement, I can do radio advertisement. And essentially, what's gonna happen because I'm working with a limited budget, I will, um, <laughs> there's a cat outside, that's funny, I will, go ahead, buy cars, run some ads, get those cars out on the streets, and then I'm gonna start running ads until I get to my turnover point. Because I, I feel that I'm gonna get this done in May, get my own insurance, um, and I'm gonna have two offices. Let's talk about that. I have found a place where I can rent an office and I can get my car dealership license. It's $250 a month. I'm going to set that up and I'm going to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to rent a place for the car rental business because essentially what's going to happen is the car dealership business is going to be at this building. I'll never be there. I'm just renting it to get my license. And what I have to do based upon my training is like if I sell a car, I'm gonna have to drive it 
to where my dealership uh, office is to sell that car because I got to do the paperwork and stuff there. Ain't no biggie because uh, it's going to be in Marietta off Delk Road. Get that going. So I'm going to have an office for the rentals because essentially probably going to have 15 cars in the rental fleet in May. I already have eight because like I'm going to do once I get those titles, I'm going to do a switch out uh, to some cheaper cars because also with hire car, woo, a lot of people, uh, none of the cars from hire car have come back. So a lot of people on hire car tends to keep the cars and they keep extending. This is going to work much better with a cheaper car. Hire car takes 25% of the rental. So um, this is what's funny. I will be able to rent these cars out at 35 bucks a day because that's what I'm going to do on hire car. Or if they come from me, just depending upon <clears throat> what the insurance is and how the insurance works. I don't know that yet. I got to find that out once I get on the phone with someone who deals with this because they're there are car rental businesses all over the place. There, there's insurance companies that deal with this. The get-go. Uh, and also, thank you for some of the folks who have uh, put some stuff in the comments. However, I don't think that these large companies are going to work with a small independent shop with just a limited inventory. You know, working with a Turo or Turo, what, they got millions of cars on the platform? So that's, that's a very big account. Um, so their insurance bill is millions of dollars per month. Easy. So that's a, a big account. But yeah, this is what I found out. Like, so be really, really careful with Turo because uh, the Porsche, like I said, stays out. The Range Rover, I get a lot of interest because the Range Rovers have third row seats, but they want to come in at eight, nine, 10 o'clock at night. And I'm just like, uh, no, you, you, you can't pick it up between the hours. Of, I, I'm not, because essentially what's going to happen is um, I will create a situation where I'd be working, you know, 16, 18 hours a day. And this is one of the things. Um, Turo. People on Turo are looking for experiences. They're looking for cars that provide an experience. That's typically because the Turo renter is different from the hire car renter and the hire car rental. And like Get Around, Get Around has this situation where you have to go to a Get Around rep or something and what they're going to do is put in a little app and they're going to put a little tracker and app in your car and that's what you have to do before you can list your car on get around um don't know about that but once i get the building because uh i'm probably going to rent an office at my old location and i asked them i was like i don't need a big office i was like what's the smallest office you have for rent i don't need a big office uh, the bigger spaces are all over the place. You know, if I wanted to rent a car dealership up in Cartersville for $18,000 a month, that's available. Uh, I'm not trying to do that. So, yeah, it's starting to shape up. But this is the importance of getting real marketplace data. Because like I said, you know, you can watch all these Turo videos, you can watch all the, but until you sign up for the app, until you get a car, until you put it on the platform, you ain't gonna know. You just ain't gonna know. And um, one of the things that is interesting about this is once I get all the kinks, because essentially there's still kinks in my business model, and I want you guys to understand this is normal. What is not normal is for you to start a business in two or three weeks and it take off and you're making all this money. That ain't normal. What the process that I'm going through is normal. You start a business, you have a hypothesis, you take it to the marketplace. The marketplace says, yay, 
or the marketplace says boo. Then you come back, you take your new data, you reevaluate, you put it back in the marketplace and you keep doing that until the marketplace says, hey, we like this. So depending upon what my insurance is gonna be per car is a huge factor in what direction I go because I don't know what the costs are gonna be. Uh, I know it's gonna be more than regular insurance. Then again, I don't know that. I really don't know that. But essentially, you know, I got some people, it's like you're in the car. I'm not in the car business yet. I don't have my license. I cannot sell cars. And this is what's funny. <clears throat> the cars that I bought, um, the probably the most expedient thing is to trade these cars in, then try to sell them. But once again, I got a haggle. I gotta, you know, I gotta, I gotta find, I gotta figure it out because I found the dealership and I can trade one of those Range Rovers in for three of their cars. That's a win because um, they, they seem to have good, clean cars and, you know, marketplace. Like there's what the marketplace wants and there's what the marketplace can afford. And I got to redo my plan because the number was off. The number was off, so all those projections are worthless right now. But I had to do that to start somewhere. So today, I'm going to redo my projections. I'm going to um, set up some more stuff, but yeah, you gotta be really, really careful because everybody's running a Turo. There's all of these uh, Instagram celebrities talking about put your car on Turo. And I have a feeling that what happened to Amazon FBA, what happened to um, eBay is going to happen to Turo. You're gonna have, you know, it's gonna be great for Turo because they're gonna have an unlimited supply of cars. But for the people renting the cars, mm, ain't gonna be so good because like uh, I had the Acura on there because once, once again, I haven't figured out how the Turo <clears throat> algorithm works. Don't know how that works yet. And um, like I said, I'm gonna keep renting the Porsche, um, the Range Rover, which was 2,300 bucks to fix. I'm gonna rent that until I get the titles, you know, make some money in the meantime. And then I'm going to bail out of the Range Rovers. I'm probably going to bail out of the Acuras. I know I'll be able to sell those Acuras pretty quick because they're pretty nice. And uh, the guy I bought them from, people were calling left or right about the Acuras. So I will be able to sell them pretty quick because uh, the Acura is a really nice car. And let me tell you what my thought process was. I made a mistake. I was buying cars that I liked. That was the wrong decision. I was like, this is nice. Someone to like this. Cause there's what, you know, uh, the Acura, the cheapest Acura was like 11,000. The most expensive one was 15,000. Now the most expensive one, I'm probably not going to put that out. Cause essentially once I get that title, I'm selling that. Cause it has the least amount of miles on it. It has the most options, it has the most features. So I'm bailing on that really quick. Um, that's gonna get me probably three cars. So five cars from the Range Rover, three cars from the Acura. That's seven cars. So I'm gonna turn three cars into seven cars. And then I'm gonna keep the Porsche, I'm gonna keep the BMW, the Camry, I'm keeping the Camry. And that leaves the other two Acras, which I can sell and get two cars each. So yeah, that's gonna give me a fleet of about 15 cars. And then we're gonna run experiments with that. Um, so now that I have real data, I can make better decisions. And this, this is one of the thing guys that you get in trouble with because you don't have any real data. Like, 
like, go ahead and see it. Do check out the Turo videos and see any one of these Turo hosts talking about Turo has a commercial rental car um, business model. You won't see it because they didn't dive that deep. They're like, I'm gonna put these cars on Turo and I'm gonna hope someone rents them. I am really driven. And once again, I'm not talking smack because they don't really, they don't know what they don't know. But yeah, Turo has, if you own a car rental dealership, you could put your cars on Turo and keep 95% of the rental. And I have a feeling that there is some more stuff because that's what I'm gonna do uh, once I get my insurance and my business license, because I'm quite sure you're gonna have to have a business license and all this other stuff. Then again, I don't know until I get there, but essentially I'm not going to, I might go ahead and buy some more cars for a higher car because now I know where I need to be for a higher car because um, it's a different crowd over at higher car. It reminds me of the people who used to come into my um, storage auction facility. Same kind of crowd, right? So we're gonna be working on that and we're gonna be working on our marketing and I might start running some test ads just to see what kind of interest, because I could write up an ad. I could kind of quasi sort of do the rental thing, but it would be like gypsy, because what I can do is put uh, full coverage on the rental and like, hey, you can rent this car and it'll be in my name. It'll be under my insurance if anything happens and you know, do it kind of gypsy like that with one car. I would not try to do all the cars just to see how that would work and print up a contract that you can rent this car. Uh, also, I got to get on the GPS trackers. I got to, you know, I, there's still a lot of kinks in the business model, a lot of kinks, a lot of kinks I got to work out because um, like if someone rents the car and it disappears, hire car or Turo is going to have to pay for it. I'm not worried about that, but I'm going to go ahead and get that. But be very, very careful about financing a car and putting it on Turo because um, that can that can haunt you. That can really become a problem based upon what's going on with Turo and everybody's running to the platform. Like, you know, and essentially the money that I spent, and I haven't even spent all the money. I spent 71, spent like maybe 100K on the eight cars. And I still got money in, I still got money in Wells Fargo to buy more cars. And now that I have a better game plan, I've got a better act, you know, representation of the numbers, I can make better decisions. But this getting this commercial insurance policy is going to be huge. It's going to be huge because it's going to allow me to do so much more, even with, um, because I already know. I can put, hey, Uber driver, Lyft driver, I got a deal for you, put this up on Craigslist. I might start running those ads right now just to see what kind of wait list I can create. I may start running those ads right now because once again, next two months, we're running experiments. Because once again, when you start a business, there's what you hope and you want to happen. Like when I created my first set of numbers, I was just, hey, this is all of the information that I have and I applied that information and I created my numbers and my numbers were wrong. See, this, this is the thing. And there's this guy, his, his video is on YouTube you, you're, you're, the way that you run a business is to be in business. And it's very, very true. 
because I wouldn't have got this data unless I spent that money and started putting cars on the platform. I would still be clueless. I would still be fumbling in the dark because I wouldn't know. But now that I've actually done this, I'm like, oh, that's how that works. And also, let's talk. Uh, Savage Finance, I got a video. Uh, many of you are talking about I should be financing these cars. Based upon the data that I have just got, if I had financed those cars, I would be screwed. If I had financed those cars, I would be screwed. You wanna know why? Because when you finance them and you buy them from a dealer, because that's how you're gonna get your financing, uh, I would have taken the hit from driving it off the lot. I bought most of these cars correctly because I've done the key, you know, all of them are in line with the KKB values. So I can get rid of them for what I pay for them or a little bit more. Uh, the Acura I paid 15 grand for, I bought it at a dealership. I had like a $800 in fees. So most I could probably get rid of that one is for is 14,000. So I took an L on that one, but the other ones I bought correctly. And um, cause it's funny, like I'm going to try to stay away from dealers, but here's the funny thing, man. I have my assistant research cars on car gurus at the moment. There are 47 cars for $3,000. The used car market is insane right now. And I might have to, you know, get me a fleet of 15, potentially 20 cars and run that for a minute until the market changes. Cause like in my videos, uh, the new socialist agenda, it's weird right now. Up is down, down is up. True market forces due to government intervention are not being enacted like if true market forces had hit homes would you know we would have like instead of a million homes on the market we would have like eight million homes on the market eight maybe ten million homes prices of homes would have crashed because of this artificial uh prop up the whole market everything is behaving crazy businesses cannot find workers because of the government prop up. So I might have to just go with my fleet for six or seven months, take that money, put it in the bank. Also, once I get my dealer's license, uh, my plan is to buy one car a month and then try to sell it. Sell that car, then take that money, go to auction, buy another car and just flip that up because I'm gonna have the car rental business over here and I'm gonna be selling cars on this side. And like I said, depending upon, um, cause uh, this guy, I got a call, he should have an office for me Friday. And then I can start my dealer licensing procedure. And that's gonna cost about four grand because I gotta get my bond, I gotta get my license, uh, I gotta get some insurance. So that's gonna be about four grand. Um, so right now, I feel pretty good about everything because now I have real data. And I'm telling you, real data is gold. And also, I learned a lesson. Like I said, once again, I'm not bashing these YouTubers. They can only tell you what they know. They can only tell you what they know based upon their experiences. So they were not doing anything wrong. However, their information wasn't suitable for me because I have a different agenda. I mean, many of them are like, hey, I made $10,000 this month and they're $10,000 in a week is slow for me. I'm, not, I'm, I'm past the 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 K a month. I'm past that. So I'm trying to go ahead and get this business because based upon my early projections, it was gonna take me to October to get to 50,000, starting in June. And now I gotta rework those numbers and I got to add some additional cost in here. And also, 
Um, one of the things that I know, I may have to start buying cars. I may have to put ads on Craigslist. If you have a car that you want to sell that's in decent condition, give me a holler. Um, you know, you never know when people fall into uh, situations like that where they need some cash. So that's another thing that we can do. But yeah, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. Now, it only took me two weeks to figure this out. Two weeks. But once again, I had to spend some money. And this right here, like there are many of you out there, you have business ideals. You've been sitting on them. You've been researching them. You've been watching YouTube videos. You've been reading blogs and you ain't spent a dime. You've not entered the marketplace and you're not getting the correct information. Until you enter the marketplace, you're not going to get the correct information. And also many YouTubers are full of crap. Once again, the Turo, the higher car people, I'm not talking about them because like I said, they were just relaying their experiences. But there are some YouTubers who are intentionally will put some BS out that you cannot implement because they want the views. They want the views and it's disgusting because like I said, you know, with the higher car Turo people, they were just talking about their experiences. Uh, I don't think there was anything nefarious or intentionally misleading with most of them. There's one dude, he definitely full of crap, but be very careful with YouTube. I'm here to give you factual, real life advice based upon real experiences, not fluff, not crap, not, I'm here to give you the real. And that's what I hope to achieve in my time here on YouTube is to educate you guys. Cause like, how many of you knew about Turo had a commercial renting, commercial car renting aspect to it? Not one video that I watched even talked about that. I found that on my own. And that's key because like, all right, let's go ahead and talk about, let's say you had a small fleet of 20 cars, right? And you were renting your 20 cars out, various price points, and you put your 20 cars on Turo to fill in the gaps because you can snooze your cars. You can put your cars on Toro. Someone ran a car from you. You can snooze it on Toro so no one can rent it. And then if your cars, you know, you go through a period where your cars are just on your lot for a week, you can let them be on Toro and rent them out and get some money. Uh, that can be a very valuable option because it's a supplement and it's not your main deal. Because I'm in Atlanta. I'm here to tell you, I can rent some cars here in Atlanta using Craigslist. I know this for a fact. I haven't done it yet, but I know this because once I start running those ads and you know, I'm gonna have to rewrite the ads and stuff because essentially uh, there are people looking for this. Hey, rent a car for 25 bucks a day and within six months, you can get it with no credit check. I already know from my no credit check videos on savage finance, how alluring that is. That you rent this car for six months. And also, you know, I've, I've also had some people who was like, hey, could you sell the car to me now? And I'm like, no, because I'm gonna have all kinds of money tied up and I'm not gonna have my money back for about a year. And that is if you make all your payments. So essentially it's like, the reason that you have to rent the car for six months is to build trust. You're building a relationship with us. That's why, because a lot of people just want to go straight, put some money down and buy the car, and I'm not floating that paper. I'm not floating that paper because um, that could be very, very capital intensive. The way that I'm doing it, because essentially, we're starting with 150,000, right? And that was money that was just chilling in my checking account. So uh, I'm not going to add a bunch of money to this and I'm gonna tell you why. I have to make the business work. And if I just keep adding money and buying cars and buying cars, this gives the appearance that the business is successful when it's just like many of these internet businesses that are just chewing up venture capital and they're not making any money. So I got 
to make money like hire a car i think with the rentals i'm up to a thousand bucks between hire a car and turo on the rentals and a thousand bucks in a week so just the way it is now probably would do four or five k a month which i haven't spent I, I gotta look at it, I gotta look at it because I, I, don't, I don't have my numbers in front of me. But if I made $5,000 in the month of May off of $100,000 invested, that's a big, that's a nice return. That is a nice return. I couldn't get that return from a savings account. I couldn't get that return from uh, many investments. And like right now, we're in a bull market. We've been in a bull market for the last 10 years. This ain't normal. Because, go ahead, fact check me. If you were in the market for the last 30 years, your, your return, which would have included this 10 year bull market period, your overall returns, if you've been in the market for 30 years, was 6.8%, including the last 10 years. So, let's say, I just left that 100K and managed that and did $5,000 per month. That's $60,000 a year. And my money would double every, let's see, 60 then 5, 40, 10,000. Every 18 months, my money would double. That's really a good return for you investment freaks that's a really good return so that's all i got for you guys if you want to get in the art of holding the link is below price isn't going up and i even go into further analysis about this process so with that i'll